I wanted to have a conversation with you, John. I know we were talking last week about the, the really sad story about the woman who set herself on fire, um, having used a, she'd been using a cream for dermatitis, um, which I hadn't realized before, but it turns out they're, they're really flammable. And it kind of got me sort of really thinking and, and discussing with you about chemicals that are in um, high street skincare. Um, and how toxic and unpleasant they can be. And then I know we, we spoke about sunscreen and how the FDA are now looking at some of the chemicals in sunscreen because their, their levels of toxic toxicity um, are too high, basically. And I wanted to kind of have a conversation with you about, you know, why these chemicals are allowed in skincare, what these chemicals are, and, and also what the alternatives are to them. Well, when we started out um, 20 years ago, um, it was interesting because I, I actually thought within 10 years, and certainly you know within 20 years, you'd see an awful lot more natural products in the market. And there has been a more natural ranges being launched, although they tend to be quite expensive. And they tend to be based on um, natural ingredients that aren't that great, because it's easier to manufacture. So shear butter and things like that, right. you know, it's easy enough to melt shear butter and add things in. But um, the chemicals that most concerned me, going back 20 years ago, was the parabens found in breast cancers. They were found, first of all, in this country in about 80% of breast cancer tumours, and then in the States they were found in 100%. So it made a lot of sense, as a, it seemed to be a smoking gun, to remove things like parabens. And that is still the underlying issue um, with a lot of skincare. They, you know, they say, oh, we don't have parabens, but that can, that's just 1% of a product. Right. The rest of the products that's you know generally on the market are made up of really uh, quite wild and wonderful and, and worrying ingredients. They are all coming from synthetic chemicals. They're all man-made. Some of them are coming from, as you say, the, the petrochemicals, the paraffins. And this lady who um, caught fire and basically was burnt to death. Um, it, it, it's worrying that that has been around now for 15 years. I remember seeing in hospitals signs up telling you about the paraffin not to smoke when you were applying these type of products because you can catch fire and this has been around for a long long time but recently obviously the papers have picked it up because of this one lady mm. and indeed many other people in the states who've all you know suffered the same fate i think i um, read that there's, there's been something like 15 people yes the last few years. and that's the people who actually have died it's yeah. you know how many people have burnt because of it and you know lived and and end up with scarring accordingly so the reason they use them is because they're easy to manufacture and they're cheap to manufacture. That's the thing. It's so easy to make a synthetic petrochemical product and just pump it in the market and tell a story behind it and put it in a nice bottle. Um, but actually, they are of no benefit to the skin whatsoever. If anybody thinks for a minute that putting a petrol or a synthetic chemical in the skin, then, you know, it's the same as like going to the supermarket, buying your fruit and vegetables, going home, throwing the fruit and vegetables away and eating the plastic bag. There's no health benefit. But they're still being prescribed, aren't they? Yeah, um, uh, the industry, the, the, uh, the medical and the beauty industry are still hanging on to it because they don't want to give it up simply because they, they don't want to move over to trying to mass produce um, products with natural ingredients. Um, and, it, you know, some of the, the, the chemicals you see, it, what, what worries me the most is you get a lot of brands who portray themselves as natural. And then when you look at the formulation and how you, how you look at it is you turn to the back and you look at the back label. But people always say to me, when are you going to shop, John? We know it's you, not by looking at you, but because you're the only person in there who's looking at the back label. Because <laughs> I'm looking at the... But one of the chemicals that I see in natural products all the time, and it's in there in large quantity, is propylene glycol. Right. Now, propylene glycol, if you, um, you, know, you go into a car accessory shop or Halfords or a garage and say, could I get some propylene glycol? They'll give you a bottle of antifreeze for your car or brake fluid. Ooh. And that's the chemical that's used in skincare. In the so interest you're putting brake fluid on your face. And, and antifreeze. And the interesting thing is in that form, it comes with wash off skin if come in contact. And yet it's in the majority of, 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 of beauty products. It's in the majority of um, products that are even considered to be natural. And it's the same chemical. It's exactly, it's exactly the, same. the same chemical. And the secret to, to all this is, you know, to look at the label in the back. And if you see these unusual names, um, you tend to find that if it's natural, they have, they have Latin names next to the, 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 the English speaking name. Um, but the chemicals have their own uh, inky names. 
And uh, it's very confusing because there's over 30,000 ingredients used in, in sort of, um, personal care products. Um, but when people come to me with skin problems or hair loss or whatever accordingly, and I see this time and time again where people are using shower gels and shampoos and their hair's thinning, especially women who are getting older, um, they, they, they're putting it down to aging hormones or you know even dyeing their hair. When it's not, it's the shampoos that are causing the, the eczemas and the psoriasis and the dry skins, the dermatitis. It's been caused with these chemical shower gels because... Basically, they, they, um, they wash off the natural oils in the skin. And I guess there must be, so I'm just thinking, like I'm thinking about sort of my hat. So not only, you know, shampoo is my face product, but also there's loads of stuff that I use in my hats, like, yeah. you know, uh, what, you know, washers, washing up liquids, yeah. washing powders, everything like that. So, you know, I guess they, they really must be everywhere. Well, if you look at what's happening um, this year with the amount of um, uh, sanitizer that's used, I mean, the nurses yeah. and the doctors are all complaining that their, their hand skins are in a dreadful state. Um, and I think this is a sort of, you know, a sign that, you know, when you're using these, um, you know, if they're using it, you know, 20, 30 times a day, um, that's equivalent to somebody using a shower gel for 20, 30 days in the shower. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the majority of products, when you go into the shops, the supermarket or the chemist or whatever, accordingly, they're made either 100% from synthetic material uh, with a bit of water added, or they're made with synthetic material with a few naturals of very small amounts, maybe one, two, three, four, five percent of a natural. So they can say, oh, this has got this natural in it. And people go, oh, I'm buying that because it's got that in it. Um, they think it's the whole product, but it's not. It's just a small percentage, but it's sitting in synthetic petrochemicals. So if you want, how do you navigate this then as a consumer? Like, is it a case of looking at labels? Are there particular ingredients you need but to... Besides, having, besides going off and having a, a, you know, an open university chemistry degree, yeah. you can't really. Um, it, it, you know, it's taken me um, certainly 20 years to get my head around, and, and people could show me a book and, and call a name out of a account and I wouldn't know what it is. You get to know the 20 or 30 main ones um, uh, and you look out for them accordingly. But um, what you probably have to do is, is trust a company who are looking out for you. So people like us who didn't start off making products with parabens, didn't start off making products with synthetic chemicals or petrochemicals, I mean, that's what we... It, we, you know, that's the ethos of our whole company is the fact that it's as natural as possible. What we have evolved into is understanding that some of the chemicals and naturals actually are really, really beneficial for humans. Um, and that's something I'm taking further with working with Birmingham University and discovering these chemicals that are in plant extracts and plant oils that are going to be beneficial to humans um, instead of using the synthetic chemicals. So if there is an alternative to these synthetic chemicals, why are companies still using such problematic ingredients? Is it simply a case of manufacturing costs? Is it much cheaper to use them? Well, it's, it's interesting because many moons ago, I um, I was invited to go out to the, um, the Far East to see a manufacturer out there who made probably the products for the top 20 skincare companies there is. Um, and they just mass produce them with these synthetic chemicals. And they put them in bottles and they label them up and and that's it. And it's it's cheap right. because to a great extent, when you use synthetic chemicals, they're so mass produced, um, they're so cheap to mass produce. Um, secondly, the fact that they don't go wrong. Um, I remember a formulator saying to me, it's a bit like aviation fuel. Um, it just never goes wrong. Um, so to a great extent, um, making a natural product, we, we have shorter shelf lives um, and all this sort of stuff. So to a big manufacturer who's supplying the world and they're making, you know, probably a big manufacturer will make more in a day than we would in the lifetime of our company. Uh, of course, and because it's natural, there'll be good years for harvest, bad years for yeah. harvest, there'll be variations. In we have to look at, well, this is the thing I've discovered working with Birmingham University is the fact that we have to look at um, where the raw material, the natural's coming from in the world, because you know a chemi the, the chemicals we want in, say, avocado oils um, from Peru may be different to Israel or wherever accordingly. So we look at where where it's coming from, 
uh, how it's grown, um, is the pesticides and all that sort of stuff, um, is it organic, you know, is it, there's loads of things, but we also mainly look for what we call therapeutic unadulterated grade. This is way uh, bigger than organic. This is where it's definitely not interfered with in any shape or form. Um, and we use those and that's why, um, you know, like essential oils you get, when you go into the shop, you tend to buy aroma oils or just for the smell. But the, the, the benefit of um, things like um, essential oils, you need to buy the therapeutic and adulterated grade to get the chemicals in them that are really good for human beings, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, even antiviral.